In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather for Eucharist today, we pause for a moment in preparation to call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, occupied the whole land and attacked Samaria, which he besieged for three years. In the ninth year of Oshia, king of Israel, the king of Assyria took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria, settling them in Hala at the Haber, a river of Gozan, and the cities of the Medes. This came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord, their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt, from under the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they venerated other gods. They followed the rites of the nations whom the Lord had cleared out of the way of the children of Israel and the kings of Israel, whom they set up. And though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, give up your evil ways and keep my commandments and statutes in accordance with the entire law which I enjoined on your fathers and which I sent you by my servants, the prophets. They did not listen but were as stiff-necked as their fathers, who had not believed in the Lord, their God. They rejected his statutes, the covenant which he had made with their fathers, and the warnings which he had given them, till, in his great anger against Israel, the Lord put them away out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. The word of the Lord. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. O God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been angry. Rally us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord and answer us. You have rocked the country and split it open. Repair the cracks in it, for it is tottering. You have made your people feel hardships. You have, been, you have given us stupefying wine. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Have not you, O God, rejected us? so that you go not forth, O God, with our armies. Give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging, that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged. And the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove that splinter from your eye, while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we continue here in the Old Testament, the, uh, the book of Kings. Now there were 12 tribes, 11 of them were in the northern kingdom of Israel, and they apparently had not been too faithful to the Lord and are delivered into the power of the Assyrians. Only the one tribe of Judah remained. They ran the southern uh, kingdom uh, where Jerusalem was, and they seemed to be safe uh, for the time being. Um, but we see here that this uh, sending of these people off to another country. Uh, today is World Refugee Day. Uh, yesterday was Juneteenth, and uh, today is the World Refugee Day. We certainly think of all the refugees from Afghanistan, from Ukraine, uh, from uh, the Sudan, and other parts of the world. There's a number of parts of the world where people are not safe, and they try to get out and to better uh, living. Even We even look at the, in the Central America trying to get out of those countries that are persecuting and killing uh, people there. We, we just try to think, what would it be for me if I were a refugee? If I had to go through all that, trying to find a place to a safer place, to find a way, and people not accepting me, and then not having enough food or where to stay. I mean, it's overwhelming when you think of it and apply it to yourself. And certainly we keep them in our, our prayer this day. We look at the uh, uh, gospel, and uh, we have to make sure not to make refugees of others by being overjudging of them and sending them away from us. You know, it's easier to see that splinter in somebody else's eye than in the plank, a plank in our eye. You hear it so often in conversations, they get sidetracked and why this is wrong and that's wrong. It doesn't matter whether the government, the, the church, the world, the, this family, whatever. I, I belong to the why. Oh my gosh, I was in the sauna one day. The guys in there were talking, holy mackerel, I wanted to get out of there. They were trying to solve the problems of the world and they, you know, they only saw one side. Well, we have to look here first to see that splinter. There's a splinter in each of our eyes. It's different for each of us but it's there. And if everybody would do nothing more than concentrate on the splinter in their own eye, the world's problems would be solved overnight. Overnight, there'd be no more, uh, no more discord uh, amongst the people. Uh, as it said here in the Psalm, have you, not, have you, O God, rejected us? No, give us aid against the foe, for worthless is the help of others. You know, Let's make sure our help for others is not worthless because we have looked first within our own eye to take care of business here before taking care of everybody else's business. Let us offer our prayers. We pray for Pope Francis and all leaders in 
the church, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit in bringing God's will to the world. We pray to the Lord. For our church during this Eucharistic revival, which began yesterday, that people will, uh, who have been away from church for COVID or whatever other reasons will come back to be fed at the table of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all refugees everywhere, that they may find what they need to stay alive and find at some point soon a home. We pray to the Lord. Pray for the people who have asked us to pray for them, the sick and the dying and those in greatest need. We pray to the Lord. Well, let's pause for a moment to add our own intentions. For these, and for a Pietrina and David Veltre and Brian Natali, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer today. We thank you for the beauty of this morning. May it be a reminder of the beauty that you wish to see in our hearts, a beauty which we share with one another by how we love them. We pray this in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. In the spirit of contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice for your sake this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash your Lord and save us from your sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, Creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom, through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
On the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. So, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, Matthew, our Bishop Emeritus, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Peace with you, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. For us, your Savior. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As Mass is ended, let us go in the peace of Christ. Good day, everyone.